The last night was the first night I had a chance to clone down a Rust project, try to understand what cargo is, try to understand the Rust syntax, and also build a Rust project for myself. Now I'll say this is not my Rust project, this is the Convex backend which they just went open source on. And the reason I'm kind of interested in this is because I use Convex for Project Planner AI. So like all this functionality, all the backend of this functionality and the file storage and the real-time web sockets, this is all hooked into Convex. And at this point, I'm very invested in Convex. I think it's a very cool backend as a service. And I want to actually understand how like this all works behind the scenes. So before this date, like you didn't know how it worked, but now it's actually open source and all of the code for how it works can be found on this repo. So that's basically what I did. I cloned this down last night and I tried to run it. Now, I'm not just saying this because Convex has sponsored me in the past. This is not a sponsor video. I'm just interested in how Convex works. This is a diagram that I actually worked up trying to reverse engineer how Convex kind of works internally. And I don't think it's very accurate. It's probably wrong. So the way Convex works is when you have a Convex project, so over here you typically have like a project that has a Convex folder and then inside of here we have Convex files. So when you save your file, ES build runs on your machine and it bundles your actions and your queries and mutations, and it writes that internally inside the convex engine inside of a table, right? So all your code is stored in a table, which will be ran later on. So as an example, when you run a query, you're basically contacting convex. Convex is going to take that query key that you've kind of bound to, that you're listening to, and now it has like a listener so that anytime more data were to mutate that key or those rows in the table, convex will send you back a web socket, right? So over here, how does it actually work with running your JavaScript code? Because you notice all the code that we write is in TypeScript, but somehow that ends up running on Convex, which is written Rust, right? So they have this Rust engine, which is all of this code that we're talking about right here, but they embedded a V8 isolate. So if we dig through this code, there is an isolate folder. I believe that's kind of related to running your JavaScript bundle. There's also a local backend, which is, I think just, it sets up like a, a web server and it has like a router here. You have all these different endpoints that it's listening to. Again, I don't really, I'm not too familiar with the Rust syntax, but this looks like a typical router that you see in like Express or anything else. And they have like a mutation endpoint and they also have a query endpoint. So what I'm showing you here is kind of related to that. It's just like a, a, a surface of that. And so when you run a mutation, it's going to take your code and it's going to pass your code to a V8 isolate. The V8 isolate has bindings to the Rust engine and knows how to call Rust code and that Rust code is what's kind of communicating directly with the database when you run mutations and queries so that you can still live in your TypeScript code, but it's running more performant Rust code under the hood for your transactions. Okay, and there's something else called a query set. So like, as your code is running, from what I understand, again, don't quote me on any of this stuff. This is just like, I don't work at Convex, so I don't know how the heck this stuff works. But as you run your mutations, you'll see that you do different database queries. All of these are kind of set up inside of instruction sets. And those get passed to the Rust engine and are executed so that it can figure out if you potentially have like a collision on a mutation where the convex engine might have to rerun your mutation because someone else already modified the data. Okay, so that's like a, my very probably weak understanding of how convex works. But if you look at the code, it's been nice because from the reverse engineering diagram, I started diving into the mutation. So if I go to mutation here, here is the endpoint for mutation. If you look into that, we'll see what this does. And if you keep diving down, I mean, it's pretty straightforward, even though I have no idea what the syntax is. It just keeps calling different methods. And those methods, at some point, will call into the V8 isolate and run your code. So we have some retry mutation methods. You keep diving down in here. Um, we have some exponential back off, I'm guessing. Okay, so like it tries to run your mutation. Now we're starting to see some transactions. I think we saw a TX. Here's a TX right here. So this is getting a transaction set from your code, probably. Okay, down here it says attempt to commit the transaction and log an error if the commit failed, even if it was an OCC error. Anyway, I'm not going to dive through this code and kind of act like I know what it is because I honestly don't. But that's what I've been kind of doing. I just want to kind of learn more about like how this stuff is set up. I think it's over 200,000 lines of code. So it's not a small endeavor to understand how this stuff works. But the cool thing is that now this is open source and you can run this on your own VPS. You can run this locally. And I want to kind of demo with you how you can do that if you're a person who's using Convex or just want to learn more about a Rust project. So after cloning their repo, you can run their Rust backend by doing just run local backend. And the way just works, from what I understand, there's like a just file and it kind of acts like a, a make or a NPM package aliases where you can kind of define some aliases and those run different things. 
So the one we did was run local backend, and that seems to run cargo run p local backend. So that's how I kind of figured out that, hey, it's calling a local backend package. And here you go, here's local backend. If you look at local backend, there's a cargo file, and it looks like it has a main set to source main. So then I kind of went down here, I read through main, and then I searched for router, and I saw that there's a router here, and then I kind of like looked at that router code. And that's how I kind of went down that path of understanding like how some of this stuff works. So after you run the Rust local backend, on another terminal, you can run a example convex project that they have. So over here, they have a demo project, which just allows you to send messages and read messages from convex. And the cool thing is this is all pointed to that locally running Rust service, right? The Rust convex service that's running right now locally. And now I spun up a convex local CLI command to point to that, okay? Now the last step is there's a Vite app that's set up which kind of demos this. So now I have everything running locally, which is awesome because I think this will make local development a lot faster. Previously, when you save your convex files, it has to go through run ES build on your files and then it has to upload that to your convex backend. Okay, and that can take some time, especially depending if you have a slow internet, because it has to bundle everything and send it over, and then the actual hosted convex service knows how to start executing your new code. So now I don't have to wait for that. I can point Project Planner AI to the convex local service, and hopefully my iteration for local development will be a lot faster. That's really all I wanted to share with you all today. I know in the past I made a video comparing Convex to Supabase, and one of the main reasons I said Supabase might win for self-hosting is because Convex didn't really have a self-hosting option. So now Convex does. You can potentially run this in production on a VPS if you wanted to, although they still strongly recommend that you use your cloud services because they have distribution, they have replication set up. It's just more production ready. But at the very least, there's still that option, that path that you can get off their platform if you need to. So I guess my final steps are, I want to learn more about this just because like I'm trying to dive more into Go and Rust and understand more complex systems. Because once you've done web development for long enough, it's a lot of just like making panels, making forms, making buttons, making them connect to an API endpoint, running some logic. And I don't think I've been exposed that much to more lower level code, I guess you could say. I haven't given up on learning Go either, so I will still look more into Go. But for anyone trying to learn more complex systems, this could be a potential good starting point, especially if I make more content about like what things I have learned from doing this. Anyway, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Have a good day and happy coding.